But I'm here to tell you now that we've had something of a challenging weekend. Things just keep coming up that are so heavy and awful and just difficult to fathom and digest. So I guess I'm going to have to to try and take that advice. But. Hi guys, Ree here from mummy4.com. Welcome back to my channel and a weekly homey kind of vlog. We've had some quite exciting vlogs on the channel that you will have seen already by the time this is up, but I haven't finished editing at the point of talking to you right now. So we've been to London for my 40th birthday. I still can't believe I'm 40. Still can't quite believe it, um, but yes. We went to London, so I need to edit the third of those London vlogs now. But I hope you have enjoyed watching them. If you haven't seen them, after this, please do go and check them out. Loads of fun. We went to see Hamilton, which was my main birthday present. It was outstanding, amazing. The children getting to meet the cast and everything afterwards was just wow, wow, wow. But it's actually been just a really busy time. It's been weekend after weekend. I don't normally go out much, and I've been out out quite a few times for my birthday, which has been amazing. But I feel like this last weekend, my body was just like, re sit down, just sit down because I was definitely coming down with something. I was quite feverish on Friday and I've just felt rough as can be all weekend. So we've had a really slow weekend. I think it's important to say, because it doesn't necessarily get filmed or shown and quite rightly, because I'm not sure that it's always appropriate to show some of the lower points on social media because if it's not mine to share, you know, if it's other people experiencing them or whatever. But I'm here to tell you now that we've had something of a challenging weekend. There have been, let's just call them, a number of family challenges. Like I said, not my place to actually discuss in detail or have filmed it. Definitely wouldn't be appropriate to film it, but... Why am I saying this? Why am I saying this? What's was the point of it? The point of it is you just got to know that whatever you're watching online or even people you see in real life, you're just getting such a teeny weeny snapshot of their actual life. So even if, like I filmed this whole weekly vlog, however long this vlog ends up being, you just get that many minutes out of how, how many minutes are in an entire week? A lot, a lot more. So while I do endeavour to always be transparent with you and be honest, you're still just getting a snapshot, even from me, even when I'm trying to show you balance. So I'm sharing this because it's so easy to look at people on social media, people you watch in vlogs, people you see on Instagram, or even people you know in real life that you see at the school or people that you follow on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, who are just putting up their highlight reel. It's so hard then when we look at our own lives and we think, oh gosh, I'm not doing that. My, my life's not that shiny and, and you know, why am I not as happy as them? Or why is my house not as tidy as them or theirs or not as perfect? And it's because no one shows you the icky bits because they can't or because they don't want to and, and that's fine. But we have to remember that everyone has them. We've got to remember that, it's just so, so important. So that was point number one that I wanted to say. The second thing I wanted to bring up, I've said this kind of thing a few times before because I've had to, because the way the world has been the last few years, things just keep coming up that are so heavy and awful and just difficult to fathom and digest. I always wonder how best to address, tackle, discuss, whatever, on my channel. And the general feedback from you guys is you guys come to me for chat, bit of real life, bit of, you know, bit of fluffy content, but a bit of organization, a bit of how to keep going, keep it on, keep it on, you know, keep it on with a juggle, struggling with a juggle, that kind of thing, mum life. I don't think you come to me for the super heavy stuff. And I know when I have watched content before now that I'm going to for the fluffy stuff. So I've, I've been to the news, I've seen what's happening in the world and I'm like, oh, that's just so awful. And then for the sake of your mental health, you have to kind of bring yourself back to like a healthy mental place so that you can get up and function for your children and keep going and go to work. And because if we let everything get to us, because it's so awful and it was so easy to, it would be so easy to do that. It would be so easy for us all to just be crying all the time. How can we then be there for our children and do our jobs and then get paid to pay the bills and, you know, just keep doing 
the things that we need to do in our own lives to keep our families going. So when I have watched content that I've I've been to the news and I need some escapism in order to bring myself back to that place where I can keep going. Then when I found discussion of that awful stuff from the news in a place where I wasn't expecting to find it, it's quite upsetting. And it's just, I feel like you guys don't come to me for the news. The best place to find out what's going on in the world is from official news channels. There are lots of those that you can follow through news apps, through Instagram accounts, through news channels, through here on YouTube. And I feel like that's the best place for you to go for that information. And I feel like when you think, no, I need... I need a mental break from that, which you were allowed to take, then perhaps that's when you come to my channel. And if I start talking about that, that might be counterproductive for you guys. So I just, in a very long-winded way, wanted to say that just because I'm not talking about it doesn't mean I'm not thinking about it or affected by it. I just don't think this is the place where you want to hear about that. I could be wrong, um, but that's generally been my kind of take on it. I hope that's come across properly. I don't know if it has, um, but I, uh, I just felt like, <laughs> I haven't said that very coherently at all, but that's what I wanted to say, sort of. I hope you guys get it. Anyway, I now need to go and get on with looking ahead of my week and planning what I've got to do today and getting on with that. Um, but first, I've blocked out a little bit of time in my diary for the first uh, like hour to do a few random jobs around the house before I sit down and work. And I've blocked that in my planner already, blocked that out this morning, and I thought I would take you around and film some of them. So um, let's go and do a few little random jobs around my house. thing that is probably not a big problem let's face it but I keep reaching for exactly the same clothes all the flipping time all the time so what I want to try and do is wear more of my wardrobe I've got enough clothes and yet I think it's just the 80-20 rule isn't it we, we wear 20% of our clothes 80% of the time so I'm going to try the hanger turn in thingy where I'm going to turn around all of the hangers in my wardrobe so they're facing the wrong way and only when I have worn them will I turn them and face them the right way, you know, when I put them back after they're clean. And then I'm going to try to only pick things out of my wardrobe with the hanger turned the wrong way. And then hopefully by the end of the season, I'll have things that I'm like, look, I've never reached that. I actually don't like it. I don't want to wear it. And those are the things that can be passed on, recycled, donated, whatever. So I'm going to do that now because why am I only wearing such a small fraction of my clothes all the time? It's crazy. Should have thought this doesn't even make sense because the stuff I've at the top is hard for me to reach so shouldn't I just put away the stuff I have worn the wrong way around so it's harder to get out because I have already worn it wouldn't that make more sense so actually rather than having everything turned the wrong way when I haven't worn it put it away the wrong way when I have worn it and that way the I'm only going to be able to easily get down without getting a little step stool. The stuff I haven't worn. That makes more sense, doesn't it? Okay, I'm turning these hangers back around, but that's going to be my system. I'm going to try it and see how much of my wardrobe I can actually get to wear. And we're now going to change it around so the hangers the wrong way 
I have one. Okay, let's switch this back. <laughs> Okay, so it turns out that was a little bit of a waste of time, but sometimes it's only by trying something that you realize what will actually work, that you can do that. So time wasted, technically, yes, but I've still got a new system that I'm really gonna try and stick to so I can try and wear more of my wardrobe. Oh, that's the challenge. Next thing I've got to do is get rid of these summer hats, which we do not need at the moment because it's flipping freezing. It was so cold walking the children to school. Put away the summer hats. For some reason, there is one random winter hat in there. We need to get out the rest of the winter hats and gloves and put away the summer ones. Because, yes, winter is coming. So far from perfect, but we've now got scarves, hats, far too many hats by the looks of it. I'll have to see which ones the children do and do not want, but hats, gloves in pairs, Christmas gloves, and perhaps most puzzlingly, puzzlingly, most puzzling, odd gloves. All those are odd gloves. Where are the other gloves? I don't know. They're odd gloves. But at least there are things they can grab. And then in here, there's, these are tissues and wipes. Sunglasses, might still need sunglasses, I guess, for sunny, wintry days. But that's one job done. And all this stuff can go back in my Calyx as off-season accessories, ready for next summer. So that's a few little jobs and bits and pieces done, but now it's time to get some work done. For which I am referring to my planner and for those of you that are like, Brie, I need a printed planner. And I was all, well, I use my digital planner and I love it. But yeah, sure, I'll make you guys a printed planner even though I'll never use it. I'm eating my words. I used to use printed planners years ago. And then I was all about writing stuff out on my iPad, which I still do to some degree. But there is something very satisfying about having my own printed planner on my desk. And to be honest, for me, as much as I love the digital planner because I can pick it up on my phone or my iPad, the printed planner, the main benefit of it is I can just write things that come into my head and still use my iPad as a second screen when I'm working. And I don't make the mistake of getting lost in my iPad and drawn into other apps and things when I go to change something or make a note, which is a bit of a risk if I'm honest. So the paper planner, sits next to me on my desk and then as I think, oh my goodness, I need to do this, I need to fill out the form, I need to make sure that I've ordered this from the groceries order or whatever pops into my head, I'm making a point of taking my pen and jotting it down and then convincing myself to just do it later and actually try and stick to the blocks of work that I've got allocated for myself. And yes, my colour highlighters are back as well, guys. My erasable coloured highlighters. I love these things. I used to use them all the time when I was using a printed planner. But I moved away from the printed planner just because I didn't find a printed planner that suited me. And then I made my own digital one and I've got my own paper one. So it's gone full circle. But the re thing I like about the printed planner and using the highlighters is you can block out what you're planning to do. So yes, you can have your to-do list and I have my to-do list 
in my Eisenhower matrix. This is a blank page, but I fill this out each week with my own Eisenhower matrix and I brainstorm my to-do list. Is it important and urgent? Obviously, these are the things I have to do first. These are the things I have to do for work that actually keep everything going to get everything posted and that's what actually earns me money. So those are the urgent important things. Some things are urgent but not important, they're just more like a little task, fill in a form or you know something quite basic but has to be done even though it's not especially important. And then we've got not urgent but important, so those are the things that I will get to but perhaps not this week. And then we've got not urgent, not important that I'm not going to be getting to for a bit. I then allocate those tasks as to which main tasks I'm going to tackle each day and those will be put onto this page here. But then per day I block out which tasks I'm going to do. So this morning I've allowed myself an hour to run around and do little bits around the house. I have then allowed myself three hours for editing the third London vlog to break the back of that at least. I'm hoping I can get it done in that time. I do often underestimate how long it takes me to edit vlogs. I know the Disney ones take me at least a full working day to do properly. And then I have to go back and make tweaks, but who knows? And I've got some post upload work to do, some scheduling and email to deal with, and then the school run. But by having it all blocked out like that in pretty colors, it makes it nice and easy for my brain. And it also makes me happy because I like pretty colors. The main thing though is really trying to keep me on task for those hours because I'm so much more productive where I'm not going, oh my goodness, I need to go and do this, ah, and then going to do it because mum brains, if you're anything like mine anyway, it's like spaghetti, isn't it? You're just like, oh my goodness, I've got this, oh my goodness, I've got that because there's so much pressure on us to do the flu forms and have they got the right uniform and then what colour are they supposed to wear for this colour day and then a dressing up day and then William's got to take in a two litre empty plastic bottle for making a rocket and then he needs ingredients and then it's just like ah so many things so <laughs> having my planner being able to blitz it all in here means that I can go no it's okay this is not going to leave my brain forever which I guess is the fear it's going to go into my planner and then I will tackle it later when I have allocated time to do that and for now Rhi you need to get back on track back on task and do what you're supposed to be doing, which is editing the London vlog, so I'm off to do that. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. It's been one of those mornings, just, um, yeah, one of those mornings. I'm aware I sound like I'm moaning now. That's not my intention. I'm just, again, for, just in the interest of transparency, there's just a couple of things that went on that I think are worth discussing. Um, first of all, as you know, if you've watched my morning routine videos, I get up early before my family so I can fit in a workout. And normally I push past the, I don't want to, I want to stay in bed and I get up and I do it anyway, even when I don't want to, and then I'm always glad I did, and I always feel better and more energized for it. Now, what I struggle with is then when I'm feeling under the weather, which if I'm honest, I still am today, I thought I was shaking off this icky cold whatever, and I'm not like properly ill, I don't need to be in bed or anything, but I don't feel right. Um, and I struggle then to know when I need to just give myself a talking to and get out of bed and get it done because I'm going to feel better for it. And when actually I need to be a bit kind to my body and it's counterproductive to push through and actually will have a negative impact on my health. So I decided this morning to get up much later. I got up in time to just literally do 10 minutes of stretching yoga, not like a full 30 minute. I was going to do like hitting, kickboxing and all sorts. I was not up for that. So anyway not feeling great, decided to just have a bit of a, a slightly slower morning. And then I asked the children to just have a bit of a tidy up for me because one of the rooms in the house, there's just stuff everywhere, the children's stuff. And the most mighty of meltdowns ensued. And then it just, it was, it was quite a morning. It was quite a morning. We managed to get through it. And by the time I got them ready for school, they were all quite smiley. But I just feel utterly drained now. So I don't know whether it's because I was feeling under the weather anyway. I always feel guilty 
when any of them are upset or have a meltdown. And I'm aware, I'm aware, saying that out loud sounds a bit silly because why should I feel guilty? But I always feel like I could have done better. I could have done something more to help them. I could have handled it better. And while it is good to learn from things to know how best we can handle things in the future, there's probably not any future in beating myself up. It's probably not very productive. And if someone else, one of my friends was saying that they were feeling guilty about that, I would tell them that there was no need for that and to stop it <laughs> immediately. So I guess I'm going to have to to try and take that advice. But I think as mums, it's really difficult because I think we feel so much pressure, or at least I do, to keep everyone happy. So if anything is forgotten, if anyone's unhappy, if anyone's melting down, if anything in the household isn't right, I feel like it's my fault. I'm imagining that's a pretty universal phenomenon. If you feel the same or indeed do not feel the same and you can <laughs> you can shed some light on how not to feel so guilty, then please do sound off in the comments. But I'm guessing that we all end up feeling like that quite a lot. So on the way back from the school run, I put an audiobook on. I've been re-listening to You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. It is just such a kick up the backside of a book. It's really just exactly what I needed to hear today. I have been thinking about chatting about some of my favourite books on the podcast and kind of talking about my favourite takeaways from certain books. Let me know if like, not quite book reviews, but um, yeah, top takeaways from books you'd like to hear as podcast episodes. If you would like to listen to this book, I will put a link down below and a link on screen for you to grab a free trial on Audible. So even if you cancel at the end of the free trial, so it won't cost you anything, you get to keep the audiobook. So it's an absolutely fantastic deal. And I, I mean, I love Audible. I rave about it all the time. I use it so much because it's a great way of reading books, digesting books, without actually having to sit and read. Because I don't have that much time to physically sit and read, but I spend a lot of time walking, cleaning, doing all the things where I can listen to books. So when I say I've read books, it feels like I've cheated because I haven't actually read them. I've listened to them on Audible, but it's the same, isn't it? It's absorbing the information. Okay, right. I need to shake myself now and um, check over the swimming bag. It's swimming later, so I need to make sure there's everything in the swimming bag. And then I need to get on with some work. But I've got to say, I feel <laughs> after the morning we've had, I just feel like I'm really, really spaced. Although a lot better for having listened to that book. I must admit that has um, pepped me up a little bit. Yes, I was even less energised than this before that. <laughs> Can you believe it? Let's check the swimming stuff and then get on with some work. So for swimming, the girls put their bathers on in the house and then put their onesies on over the top. So when they get to the pool, then they just have to take off the onesie and they're ready to get in the water since they put the goggles on. They then put what they call muffin boots on their feet, but they're just like Primark version of Uggs. Although they used to have Primark version of Uggs, I think these versions they've got now are from Next. So then once they get out of the pool, I wash their hair before they take their bathers off. So I need to refill the shampoo and conditioner. And then they've got towels and hair towels. Then they put on some pants and put their onesies back on. And then they put dry robes over the top of everything. They've also got hair brushes, multiple sets of goggles because they don't add much extra weight and then if one goes missing is broken or whatever the spares and then all of that gets put back into here i've also got swim hats in case they want those they don't always want them but they're there if they want them then all of this stuff as it comes out of the dryer every week i just pack it straight back into the swimming bag um i do like to check it on swimming day just to make sure it's all there so for example the shampoo and conditioner needs sorting but Generally, it doesn't go back into circulation, into drawers and things like that. It just goes straight back in the swim bag and then I know everything is where it needs to be. And then Will has got his own bag because obviously he goes into a separate changing room. And then this bag that I use for the shampoo and conditioner, it's just a really old wet bag I used to use from when I did cloth and nappies. These things are super handy even if you don't need cloth and nappies though because if you need to transport wet things, wet bathers, wet bottles, wet, anything, then they're a good addition to a bag. So as I won't actually be using the living room for the rest of the day, I thought I may as well put out the swimming stuff. These are the children's dry robes. 
They have had versions of these before in Primark. My auntie very kindly bought these for the children one Christmas and they're absolutely brilliant for swimming. They can actually get changed inside them. Will's got a blue one over there. So I've got Will's bag, which he just changes when he gets to swimming, to be honest. It's his Ugg type boots from Next and his dry robe. And then the stuff the girls need to put on after school. They are muffin boots as they call them and they're dry robes. And then that should be nice and quick out the door to swimming because it's a very tight turnaround after school. As my washing machine and dryer are basically in the same room as my office, I don't like to have them on while I'm working because it's noisy. So what I do is I set them to go off when I leave for the school run. So I put them on now while I've thought of it and then it's just set to go. They will automatically start washing and drying around the time I'm set to leave the room anyway. And that means I don't forget to put them on because otherwise if I don't set them, while I'm thinking of it, sometimes I forget to put them on and I've got stuff in the washing machine that hasn't even turned on and that's annoying. So now all I've got to do is hang up this wet washing. I did a load earlier. This is stuff that doesn't go in the dryer. And it goes to be hung up in my airing cupboard thing. Now this isn't actually on at the moment, but it's getting so flipping cold. We are gonna have to turn the heating on soon um, and then everything will dry a bit better anyway. So these are my husband's t-shirts. They need to go upstairs. So I need to take those out, hang this stuff up, put it in there and then get on with some work. And <laughs> system wise, the stuff that I put in first goes this side. So that would be the wetter stuff. And then the stuff that's been the longest goes over here. It should be the driest. My husband cut up these little things to keep the hangers separate from each other. So there's like a slot for each hanger and that way they don't go too close together. And we know when they're full, some stuff's got to be emptied before things go into it. And it works pretty well. A lot of people say, does the stuff really dry? It dries quite quickly when it's warm. It dries quite quickly when the heating is on. We have this funny in-between period where it takes a bit longer. But yes, it does work pretty well. time to turn on my computer and get some work done. There it is. Um, incidentally, I picked out something out of my wardrobe that I have not worn in ages because I'm trying to do that. So that's working. <laughs> Hooray! Small wins. Okay, now I need to just try and focus my brain that feels incredibly foggy and tick some things off my list because then I will feel productive and like the day is, is kind of back on track. And look what's just arrived for swimming from Amazon. They are disposable shoe covers because when you go poolside, they're supposed to always have these disposable shoe covers for you to use. And it seems that they don't seem to have any left anymore. There's just some sort of half leftover old ones with holes in them. So I bought my own because it's either that or you have to take your shoes all the way off and the, it, it's not the best. It's not the best poolside. So if they can't supply them like they're supposed to, you gotta pack your own. So we're heading off today to the girls share my work day. So girls, I'm getting to come and see what you're doing in school, which is nice, mm. isn't it? Yeah. Have you done lots of lovely work to show mummy? Yeah. Also, the girls had good news in swimming yesterday. What happened in swimming? Um, I'm gonna move that. That's excellent. Well done. And William, you had some excellent news yesterday? Yeah, 98% in my maths test and I've got an eyelash. <laughs> you've got an eyelash in your eye. How have you managed that? Well, very proud of you for the excellent maths results. That means you've been top set maths. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Well done. Right, guys, has everyone got their coats zipped yeah. up to the top? It's flipping freezing at the moment. Honestly, it's like, it was not wintry at all. And when we were in London, which was not long ago, 
it was a heat wave and now it's like snow boots at the ready and freezing. Back home from Share My Work Day. It's so lovely I get to go in and have the girls actually show me what they've done and not just look through things independently like in parents evening without them. Equally, I do acknowledge it is a massive challenge. I mean, I struggle enough and I haven't got a normal job in that I work for myself from home. It must be such a challenge for people. Like if I was a nurse and I worked in a ward, then I'd have to be there at a set time. So that must be so, so difficult. And I always feel that when there are these during the day things that parents are expected to go to, that if I'm struggling with a reasonably flexible job, other people must really, really be struggling. And I know there's always so much guilt attached to when you can't go or then if you've, you've fallen behind with work and whatever. I guess it's just a whole other <laughs> thing. Um, parents having to juggle, isn't it? The guilt of having to balance not just all the notes and things we have to remember, but the things we have to physically attend and the guilt of when we can't attend them. Anyway, um, the sh it was lovely seeing their work. Something that really struck me actually about their work is how much mindset stuff they're doing in school these days. And I'm not sure if it's an across the board thing or if we're just very, very lucky with our school, but they're talking about things that I didn't learn until I was in my thirties. So they do the book, The Chimp Paradox, which obviously they do the children's version of the book. Uh, I've talked about it a few times before, but basically it talks about the, the part of our brain that's the human brain, which is our kind of logical brain. And then the part of our brain that they refer to as the chimp brain is the bit that, that reacts and tries to keep it safe and thinks that we still live in a jungle and are at risk from wild animals and things. The part of our brain that doesn't realise we've evolved and we live in houses and we're not at risk of the things that we were at risk of many, many, many years ago. And that part of our brain tries to keep us safe by saying, ah, danger, danger, and making us panic about things, like social situations. Like we're not really gonna get cast out the tribe and starve and eaten by wild animals now if someone doesn't talk to us in the office but our chimp brain thinks it's the same thing thinks we're going to starve and die if someone's mean to us so anyway the chimp paradox i've not explained it terribly well but it's a fantastic book definitely read it it definitely resonated with me a lot but they do the children's version of this chimp paradox book in my children's school and it's great and they have got bits of the work that the girls were doing about their chimp brain and it's just lovely to see that they're doing this understanding themselves and mindfulness there's stuff on the walls about mindfulness it's so lovely and they're doing stuff about fixed mindset and growth mindset and fixed mindset is I can't do it and growth mindset is I can't do it yet but I can learn and honestly I, I genuinely didn't learn about this till I, till I was in my 30s and I just think if the children are learning about this stuff now think of the advantages they're going to have if they understand about positive mental health and growth mindset and oh I just have such high hopes for them so I don't know if all schools are doing that. I mean, maybe chime in the comments um, and let me know if your schools are doing things like that. So I'm not sure if it's a pretty standard thing now and a lot of schools are catching up. Or if we're just very, very lucky with our school. Anyway, I'm now going to record my next podcast episode. I have got a separate video podcast channel. I did not want to start another channel, but I know my video podcast wasn't the same format as the stuff on this channel, so it didn't really make sense. So I've got a very small video podcast channel. It's very much so that if you want to listen to the podcast, but you want to listen to it on YouTube, it's not a super visual video. It's more like to listen to. It's just me talking to the camera, which obviously, it's what I do in all my videos, isn't it? But it's not as like edited or as much to look at as it would be in a vlog, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, if you like podcasts, then you can go to realtalkwithree.com or just search Real Talk With Re on whichever podcast provider, you know, like Apple Podcasts or whatever the other ones are, or all the, the big ones, or whatever you listen to podcasts, let me know in the comments, where do you listen to podcasts? But you can find the podcast over there or on this separate YouTube channel which um, you can find all the details on screen, down in the description, all the places like that, so that you can find that. But if you would do me a, a massive solid and go and subscribe over there, then I'd be really, really grateful. So it's always nice to have your support. Thank you in advance for doing that. Okay, let's record this podcast and then get on with some editing for some other stuff for my Disney channel I think I'm doing today. Back from the school run, but I am heading back out in just a minute. Looking rather wind sweat. It's a lovely day. It's just very windy. Um, 
got as far as having dropped the girls off at two minutes away. I had a phone call from the school, so I was panicking. She's got a trip today to the centre with all her stuff. Her forest calls school kit was in school, she needed that, but she can't find it anywhere. So I've just been scrabbling around finding spare bits of extra forest school kit, relabeling them. Thank goodness I had spares that the others had grown out of. I'm now gonna run all those bits back to school and then I can come back, maybe sort out my hair and actually get some work done. <sighs> well, one hour later and I'm back. No coat because it's um, it's really warm now. It's really bizarre. What is going on in the world? I have been all hat and gloves and stuff for days because it's been absolutely freezing. Um, and now I was boiling just walking back and forth. Incidentally, got all the way back to school. Very concerned that Zara was very upset. And she's standing there head to toe in her forest school kit that I knew she had in school, they'd found it. So I took her some spares um, and then it ended up taking a lot longer to get out of there than anticipated because I got roped into helping with just putting on shoes and coats and things, which is which is fine and lovely. But that's why I'm an hour later, still looking disheveled. And you know what? I can't even bother to straighten my hair. I'm just gonna brush out and that'll have to do. Um, so I'm gonna stick on my computer now. Oh my goodness. Oh, the cold makes my nose run, it's not even that cold, but I don't know. I think it's just change of temperature, going from warm to cold, or vice versa. My nose runs all around, it's ridiculous. Anyway, I'm gonna put my computer on, and um, while that is booting up, um, I just want to talk to you very briefly about what we've been enjoying for TV, and I'm hoping that you guys are gonna reciprocate in the comments and let me know what you've been enjoying watching because um, I love a good recommendation and there's nothing more annoying than coming to an end of a good series. Gosh, my hair is a mess. Coming to the end of a good series and not being able to know what to watch next. So we've just finished watching the Beckham's documentary on Netflix. Now, I'm not into football at all. My husband's just never been into football, which obviously suits me because I'm not into football. So I didn't think I'd be that interested in it but it's all the pop culture references and all of the stuff. I remember, I don't remember anything about the football, I remember the news stories um, because it was all the time I was kind of like a teenager, um, you know, uh, 90s, and then like a terribly young person in the, um, the early noughties. It was really, really interesting. Um, I think they sold it on in the um, intro trailery thing they talked about the affair and I think they put that in the trailer to try and set people in who weren't into football but incidentally they really skimmed over that they didn't want to talk about it and that's fine it's their prerogative it's their show they, they can talk about or not talk about whatever they want it's, it's their lives they can share or not share whatever they choose to but it really was a very interesting insight into them as people and what they went through. Very interesting, really liked it. And even the football in it was interesting, even though I'm not into football, but then they put music behind it to tell you how you were supposed to feel about the football, which I guess made it all more interesting. The other thing that was football-y, which we watched before, which I never thought I'd like in a million years because I'm just not that into football, was Ted Lasso, which is on Apple TV Plus. So you, if you buy a new iPhone or something, you end up getting a few free subscription to it, or you can pay to watch it, sort of like Netflix for Apple devices. And Ted Lasso is so good. It's about football, but it's not about football. It's about people. Do you know what I mean? But if you haven't seen Ted Lasso, oh, the life lessons that I've learned from Ted Lasso, oh my goodness, it's like therapy, but entertainment, but therapy, but healing, but entertainment is so good. We did start watching although I was tired and ended up going to bed. It was not because it was boring, but um, just because I was tired. The, I think it's called This Is Wrexham, where Ryan Reynolds and some other guy, I can't remember the name of, buy Wrexham Football Club. And that is on Disney Plus, and in a similar way to like the Ted Lasso and the Beckham stuff, is more about people than football. So I think I will be interested to carry on with that. Um, but last night, nothing to do with football, we started watching, because one of my friends started watching it and was raving about it, something called The Tower on ITV, catch up thing, ITV Plus, something like that. <sighs> really, really good. It was one of those ones, I'm normally like, I'm ready for bed and I don't care if I don't watch the end of something. I really wanted to stay up and watch more. It was a, a bit sad and a bit gruesome, Sort of a really tragic awful thing happens at the beginning which is quite horrible but the 
the mystery behind it and the as soon as you like find something else out you want to know the next thing it's just really good at dragging you in quite pleased we found that apparently there are a few seasons of it so if you haven't seen that so far i've only watched two episodes but we're really enjoying that now i really do have to stop talking because i should have started working an hour ago so um messy hair and all i mean it doesn't matter because you know i'm not going to see anyone now um it's only you guys and you guys don't mind you guys don't mind if i look wind swept you um anyway i'm gonna carry on with a bit of work before i go and get my kiddos in no time it's friday and it's another wear red day so on Monday, you had to wear red for... Shmai day. Shmai well, day. red, white or green. Red, white or green. And you were in your spirit jerseys on Monday, weren't you? So that was red and now it's Friday and it's red for oh. show races and the red card. Yeah. And you could wear pink. Because of... Cancer awareness. Cancer day. awareness. But girls, you're only allowed to wear red, although you have got pink on you. Oh, and you've got another wobbly mm. tooth, have you? <laughs> so yes, it's Friday. It's the end of the week. Who's got that Friday feeling? Is that Friday feeling? Yay! Or Yay! half asleep? How are we feeling? Half asleep. Half asleep. Um, <laughs> half asleep. Sure. Half asleep. I don't know. I you don't know. You don't know. How are you, well? Tired? It's good. Oh. It's, it's a long week and yeah. Out of head. Sorry, baby. Mm. <laughs> it's a long week. I can't believe it's nearly half term. And you're nearly half a term into secondary school. Yeah, and there's. I just can't yeah. believe it's all you're going. I'm stretching up as tall as yeah. possible can now. This is as tall as I am. I know. My babies are all catching me up. They're all I'm catching not. me up. This You're not, you. <laughs> You're doing me a favour and staying little for me. Mummy. You're staying little for me. I'm on my tippy toes. <laughs> you are sitting on your tippy toes, aren't you? Right, come on, kiddos. Please. Shoes and coats. Let's tackle the last day of school for the week. Come on, shoes and coats. Quick, quick. Enough looking at your shoes in the mirror. Well, that's my kiddos safely in school and before I get on with a little bit of work I am going to do a little bit of a power hour I think. I keep noticing whenever I'm doing yoga this is the problem with doing yoga things like how disgusting it is under the furniture and just all the yucky things that's you know you're, you're doing your poses and then you're looking under and you're thinking yuck. So that's what I'm going to do now I'm just going to do an hour I've got laundry to put away I've got bit of cleaning to do I'm just gonna try and get the place sort of at a level for the weekend and you will be able to catch that in the next video which will be a power hour speed clean with me which will be on screen as soon as it's live or you can catch that and other early release upcoming behind the scenes all the things over in my patreon which you can find the details of on screen too thanks so much for watching don't forget to like subscribe do those youtubey things and I'll see you in the next one bye guys <laughs>